Morning everyone, we are back in the garage today. There's Kieran, I'm obviously here. Uh, we're working on the Panda today. My Panda uh, has some suspension woes. Um, it's just ticked over 91,000 miles and the suspension damper on uh, this side here, um, I believe to be completely shot. Um, I come to that conclusion in a number of ways. Uh, mainly when I'm driving it, if you hit a pothole on this side, it makes a tremendous banging. Um, if you go over any bumps, it's very unsettled. Uh, you can't see at the minute, but under here, you can actually see that the uh, damper fluid is, is leaking out. Um, but just as a quick demonstration, Kieran's going to press over on that side, which I think is good. And it's fairly solid. It sort of bounces back and damps itself and settles quite quickly on this side. Not sure if you can see that, but uh, when you press it down, uh, it, it, it's like a blancmange. It takes quite a long time to uh, to settle back to its normal position. Not so, a sporty feel. Not a sporty feel. So for those reasons, I'm fairly sure that that is knackered and we're going to replace that one. And as it's suspension, we're going to also replace the other side as well. It's always recommended that you do these things, like your brakes, in pairs. So let's crack on. Step one then. Um, I have um, released the tension on the wheel nuts ever so slightly uh, and then I've jacked the car up with a jack and I've got an axle stand under there so both of those things are supporting the weight of the car obviously um, all the other three wheels are on the ground and the handbrake is on so we're going to take that wheel off now that's the wheel off then um, with the wheel off you can see much more clearly what the problem is here it's really very obvious when you actually look Getting under here, you can see that this boot has come loose and all the oil is leaking everywhere. So that should not be wet. You can see that is uh, covered in oil. It's gone all up the back there. It's all down here, uh, all around the back. That's and not where it needs to be. All over here. And worryingly, it's also on the brake caliper. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's not good. That's a safety issue. Uh, so we'll we'll have a look at that. But yes, that damper is broken. Time to start removing some bits and bobs. Uh, so first thing to remove is this little pipe here. I think this is for the ABS sensor. Uh, we're just going to slide that out of there like that. And then we've got this little clip here that's holding the brake line on. Uh, you can probably use a screwdriver or some kind of thing to press in the middle here so that just came off where's it gone that just came off like that and then hopefully this should now just pull out of there so those are both released from the strut so as we remove the strut that's not going to uh, pull the brake lines or anything like that moving on then uh, we need to remove uh, this anti roll bar drop link at the top here, as you can see where we are there. Um, this right here is 16mm, and there is a little Allen key socket there, which is for 5mm Allen key. And what that does is it stops it turning while you turn the, uh, the nut here. Uh, this one was a bit tricky to start off, we have started this off. Uh, what we had to do was just clean it up with a wire brush. I put a little WD-40 in there and then we've got the extendo tool. So breaker bar for leverage, uh, extension piece to get us right in there. And then very Bro. carefully making sure to keep that straight on that nut. We've just started to turn it. So now I'm going to do the rest of it with a spanner. So this is us removing this um, top nut then. Um, I'm holding it with a 5mm Allen key and I've got a 16mm spanner just to wind that off. Wind your nut off. Wind your nut off. So this is all pretty boring. You don't really need to watch this. I'm just going to keep doing this until we get this removed. Keep watching. Progress. Uh, this is now free to come off. I've just put that back on to show you where that came from. Put that over there. Uh, now we need to remove this uh, from the strut. Um, it was under tension so it was a little difficult to get out so what we've done 
is we've used the jack. This is a separate jack. That one is still over there. If you've only got one jack, then just use that one. As long as it's on axle stands, it's fine. Uh, so yes, we've used the jack and a block of wood to just raise the hub a little bit, which has released that tension. And we can now just move that Get out, out of the way. way there. Okay, job done. Okay, uh, we've got to remove um, this and this here so we can get this swivel hub off the strut. Uh, these nuts here are 17 and the back end of those, that's a 15. So I've got 15 spanner there and a 17 on the socket here. I can just get that on there somewhere. Sort it out, John. I should be able to turn that. We did have to use the breaker bar to get those going, um, but now they are released. I'm just gonna use the normal hand tools. Awkwardly twiddling things. Again, it's quite boring. See you in a bit. That's the first one out then. Um, that was the bottom one. It was just sitting in there. And we've removed the top one. This comes off now, so it's just a case of pushing that bolt through there. Um, we did have a little bit of rust and corrosion here which is making it difficult to get off. So we just wound it off a little bit and then back on a little bit and then off a little bit more and then back a little bit more. So backwards and forwards, uh, getting involved with the wire brush and the uh, WD-40 slash uh, GT-85. It's actually GT-85 and other penetrating fluids are available. Uh, yep, so we're going to remove that now, which should drop the swivel hub out of the way. So those two are out now. Um, there is nothing really holding the swivel hub here onto the strut, so I think my beautiful assistant, my Debbie McGee, mm, okay, you can be Paul Daniels, you can be Debbie McGee, and I don't know who that makes me, but we're going to try and remove that now, so it's just a case of pulling it clear of the strut in some there we go there we are so obviously be careful of the uh, brake lines the and any, any cables or wires or anything but that is essentially free now from the bottom end so we need to go up the top here and release it from the top when you don't quite have the tool you need sometimes you have to make it We're up top now and we need to remove this uh, nut here. This is the only thing holding the strut in. Um, it's a 19 mil nut there. Uh, so we have cleaned it and put a little bit of the GT85 on. Um, it's a little bit difficult to get off because you can't fit a spanner down into there. Doesn't, doesn't really happen. Um, and if you put a socket on, which I've got here, and try and turn it, what happens is the whole damper rod here spins, so the whole thing just spins uh, and it doesn't actually untighten. So what you have to do is hold it at the top there, there is an allen key recess, that's a 6mm allen key, um, and then you have to undo this nut. Now, as I say, it's a little bit tricky, because if you've got that there, you can't then get your socket on. And you can't get your spanner in because it's recessed. Yes, thanks, Kieran. <laughs> That's Kieran trying to get a socket in. Um, yeah, so that it's recessed, you can't get the spanner in, you can't get the socket in. What do you do? Well, if you mean Kieran. Well, you would certainly go out and buy the tool that you need. No, we don't do that. We never do that. So we just bodge it. Uh, so what I've done is I've got an old 19mm socket, and you can see I've just ground there and the other side if you can see that, to create some flats, which means what I can do now is put that on there. I've got an adjustable spanner, which is the same diameter as the flats, so that now fits on there. We've got the Allen key in the top, and you can turn whilst holding the Allen key. So that is how you bodge that job. So we're going to crack on and remove the strut. See you in a bit. How are you getting on there, boss man? very affectionate about this panda. He's really loving the strut. 
Okay, so uh, that is all the way off now. Ta -da, there it is. So I'll just put that there for now. Uh, this can now just be released out of the way, which means Kieran should be able to remove the strut Underway. entirely. Which should now pop out here. Oh! Ah, monster! Let's have a look at that actually. Uh, so now it's off, let's investigate that a little bit more. You can see more clearly what has happened here. Uh, so this little um, boot here has deteriorated over time and disappeared basically, which I think has allowed road grime and grit and all sorts of business to get in here, which then destroys the seals, which then allows all the oil to come out all over the place. Um, and then you have to replace the whole job lot. So that's what we're doing now and that's what's happened. I hope you can see that a bit more clearly than you could earlier on. Okay, we're going to dismantle this now and swap it over for the new one. Right then, just before we dismantle this, uh, just a little video to show where everything is relative to everything else. So if you could just spin it that way a little bit, Kieran. We'll start here. There is a little tang there and that is in the same orientation as that. So they are the same. Kieran is spinning it, which makes it rather more complicated to see. But yes, that tang does line up with that down at the bottom. Uh, you can see, obviously, the spring has a little groove that that fits into, and the same at the top. And then there is a little nub in here, which I think has to point to the back of the car, but I'll check that when we put that back on. So that goes, I think, to the back of the car. Uh, what we're going to do now, then, we're going to get the spring compressors. We're going to compress that spring um, because it's obviously placing quite a lot of load on this top thing here. So we compress that and with that compressed we can then release the nut here, uh, take the top off, take the spring off and do all the rest of the gubbins. So we're going to get those now. Okay, time to remove the springs. Uh, we've got a coil spring compressor there and one round the other side and it's just a case of using the half inch ratchet to tighten it down. Uh, you have to do a little bit on this side, a little bit on that side, keep swapping, keep swapping so it's, um, it's compressing as equally as possible and then eventually you'll feel that the tension is released on the top cap there um, and that's when you can start to remove that nut. So we're going to lay that down and face it away from us because there's a tremendous amount of pressure in there and if anything slips off, don't want it in the face. So we're going to aim it somewhere out of the way and we're going to keep well clear of it when we tighten that down. The spring's compressed now. Um, as you can see, the whole job lot moves independently of the spring. Uh, and just to clarify, it was a case of doing a few turns on this one, a few quarter turns on that one, a few quarter, a few quarter turns on that one and that one, and alternating so that the spring was compressed equally rather than bending it to one side like that because that's quite dangerous. You need to make sure it's going down evenly. Uh, but once it gets to this point, you can see all the uh, the centre bit moves inside the spring. So now you can uh, undo the top nut, which is what we'll do now. Okay, so we're going to remove that now. Please don't point it at me. Um, right, to do that, we've got the 6mm Allen key in the end there. Um, and I just used the adjustable spanner to start to turn that. It didn't have any pressure on it really. Um, so now I can take that off by hand. Winding, winding, winding. Uh, you can see that's got a slight step in it, so that's come off in that direction, which now means that that can come off, which means that uh, the spring can now come off and be put somewhere safe over here, pointing somewhere at a wall or something like that. Coward. Yeah, 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 yeah. For some reason, uh, compressing springs like that worries the hell out of me. I don't know why. It's just one of those things. And now you've got Space Age Ray Gun. Space <laughs> Age Ray Gun. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can see basically that that is completely shagged. But 91,000 miles, it's the original one, so I think I've had my wear out of it. Pop that away. That's a good point, actually. Kieran has just compressed that. Uh, with very little resistance 
in either direction. So that's not a good way to tell that it's done for. Just a little bit of exercise tool now. So that's the old one. I'm going to give him the new one, see if he can do that. Let's see the difference. This is the new one then. Um, slightly shinier, totally different colour. Kieran's now seeing if he can press that down and you'll note it is quite hard to do and that it does rebound all on its own whereas that one <laughs> does not so if ever you need a definitive proof that that needs replacing there you have it there's the new one I'm going to start putting stuff back together um, I have gone for Coney uh, There's a part number for this left one. Um, they are the, what is it, STRTs or something? I don't know. It's the one that everyone says to go for anyway. Excuse me. Can I just say though, bless you. Thanks. Coney, if anybody from Coney is watching this, your instructions are catastrophically shit. Absolutely terrible. No idea what's going on. There's a random hook, wire hook thing, which was attached in there with no explanation as to what that is, nothing on the instructions about what that is. There's also this plastic, um, well, I don't know what the hell you'd call that, which is shown, comes in the packet, and it's shown as going on there. Again, absolutely no explanation as to what that's for. Doesn't seem to serve any purpose when it's on there. Um, I, and I assume Kieran, are not clever enough to know what the answer is to that. Uh, yeah. So thank you, Corny, for your useless instructions. We're just improvising, we're guessing. If you aren't happy doing that, uh, maybe ring Corny, give, her, give him a little call, have a whinge at him. Perhaps they can explain to you what the hell all that's about. And, and let us know if you find out what that thing is. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, that thing. please leave us a comment, let us know, because chances are my suspension's gonna fall to bits because I've not done something <laughs> right. Uh, but as ever, we are not trained mechanics, we are making this up as we go along, more or less. Uh, so take your own risks, you decide for yourself. Okay, here's the old spring. I am reusing the old spring. I am a cheapskate. I have not bought a new spring. Uh, we're just going to pop that. Kieran is going to pop that. Over the new strut there. So we're going to pop that in and just remembering that that will sit in that little recess which keeps it in place. So apologies, we've got wind noise and now also the air ambulance going over. They, they know we're working, so... They're just hovering in the area in case we have any problems. Cheers, guys! Anyway, What's this? the spring is on. Uh, this is a new bump stop with integral... Integrated? Integral? Integral? Integral. Integral. Integral dust boot. Uh, the old dust boot was knackered, and I think that's partly the reason why the damper ended up leaking all its oil. Um, there's some chatter on the Fiat forum about these things not fitting on the Corny dampers quite right, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. So we've got the spring on, we've got the bump stop on. Next up, cap that. This thing, there's actually two parts there uh, stuck together. correct orientation but we've got a bit of movement to be able to get things where we had them lined up previously. I think that was over there but it will all become apparent. Yeah so uh, just to spin that around a little bit if you remember we've got this bit and this bit lined up uh, the top does spin independently so we should be alright on that front. Okay Get your nuts on, get your nuts on, honey. Not going on. Yeah. Um, it wasn't very tight. Most of the tension, I think, comes from the spring. Uh, so we're not going to be able to tighten that up until the car's back on its wheels, I wouldn't imagine. So I said we might not be able to tighten this until it's back on its wheels, but of course that was absolute nonsense because when it's back on its wheels, you won't be able to get to that one. I was thinking about the other one, so ignore that. Um, this one, 
is supposed to be tightened to 65 Newton meters. Again, you need some kind of strange and wonderful contraption, no doubt available at a hefty price from Fiat to do that. Uh, so, 65 Newton meters, was it asking for? I think it was 65. 65. So, but we... how you get that on and a thing in another? Yeah, so special tools required. Feel free to go and buy them, we didn't. Um, but I'm gonna say that's 65 Newton meters. So with that done, we released the uh, tension in the spring. Um, again, it was a little bit on the left, a little bit on the right, a little bit left, right, left, right, left, right, so that it extends evenly and not bendy, um, making sure all the while that uh, this and this were lined up and that this little tang was going over here facing towards what will be the rear of the vehicle. So that is now all back together and ready to go back onto the car. So Kieran's offering that strut up through the wheel arch, back up to the top here, uh, ensuring that they, remember the little tang has to face towards the rear. Dog attack! Dog has seen the cat and barking. So anyway, that's back up through there. Uh, the little top thing goes on there. We've got a new nut supplied by Coney. So that's going That's go good. Up. Instructions bad. Yeah. Rubbish instructions, but a free nut. So uh, swings and roundabouts. So we're tightening that one down now. Um, not sure what the torque setting is. I'll have a look and we'll uh, get back to you. Okay, I've just checked what that was, and the torque setting for that is 50 Newton meters. We can't do that until it is on, on its road wheels. The whole car has to be down on the ground. That's where I got confused before. Uh, so we can just tighten it a little bit just to hold the strut in place um, and then once everything's reassembled we'll tighten that down to 50 Newton meters. Uh, so to tighten it up at all it's it's this strange contraption again um, you've got the uh, is that a five or a six? This one on the new Kearney's is now the five rather than the six mil. All right okay so uh, that's now a five mil on the Kearney's. Uh, it's the same 19 mil socket with the flat edges ground so um, it's just this process Slow. again. Slow burning process just to get that tightened up a little bit. So we'll do that and then carry on. So that's that one tightened down a little bit. Um, it's not at the specified torque setting just yet, but it is enough to hold the strut in position. And the next step I can get down here uh, is to get the swivel hub back into uh, here and then put the two bolts, nuts and bolts through. Uh, I think the torque setting for those was 75 Newton meters, so that's what we're gonna do now. And then probably the drop, uh, anti-roll bar drop link, and then we'll get back to you. Okay, a little bit of an explanation then. Uh, we had got the swivel hub up on the jack there. Um, in order to get these two um, bolts through here, we had to lower it down off the jack and sort of wiggle it into position and stick the um, stick the bolts through, so that's what we did first. And then, to get the top of the anti-roll bar drop link back in position, we had to go back up on the jack uh, and slot that through there. So all these nuts are just sort of uh, loose. Finger tight. Not even finger tight, they're just loosely on at the moment, so we're gonna tighten those up now. Uh, this was 75 Newton meters, these two. Um, not sure if that's got one, um, I'll have a look for you and let you know if it does. Right, we're all tightened up then. 75 Newton meters top and bottom here, 50 Newton meters here. Um, obviously that's tricky because you need to do uh, this again. So what we did is we held it with the Allen key and we used a 16 mil spanner just to tighten it as tight as we could. And then once it's bitten down, you can use a normal socket and torque wrench uh, to do that. If you don't have a 16 mil socket, we use this one, which is a, what size is this? I think the 10 mil spark plug. Where does it say there? And this way a bit further. 10 mil spark plug socket, which actually is a 16 mil fitting. So that worked quite nicely. Nice deep one as well. Yeah. Um, obviously we've pushed this back in here and this back in here. So we're gonna put that clip back on there. Uh, probably have a clean up and try and get rid of some of this oil and business and then it's a case of putting the wheel back on, tightening this 
and that's this side done so uh, we'll carry on as you can see the car is back on the ground and um, the wheel nuts are tightened up and we've tightened the top nut there tighten that one up now it's on the ground so in theory that's the end of that job and we've just got all this mess to move over to the other side now and then we'll do that one and call it a day um, the pasties first though pasties okay. okay that's both sides done then and I think you need to let these bed in for a while so I'm going to drive around for a while uh, after that I think you possibly need to get the steering geometry looked at um, but I'll have a look at that in a little while uh, just want to show you the old ones this one over here is the uh, one that was knackered this one is theoretically fine I'll just go around this side you can see it's quite rusty that's not pitted. dirt that is just pitting just eating right into it which may have been the original problem uh, Kieran's possibly going to demonstrate the difference in the resistance yeah so there there you go uh, this one is obviously working as it should and this one is not up. so if anybody wants to buy a second hand <laughs> strut on eBay <laughs> one good one. <laughs> as long as it's your uh, driver's side one give us a shout okay hope that was helpful ta -ra.